All right. Your dreams are a powerful tool for increasing self-awareness. Um, for they contain with them the unfiltered truth. Whether it be a dream or a nightmare, they are the keys to understanding your inner self. Both your joy and your fears. Commune with Gaia and Great Spirit in the stillness of your slumber. Learn to read and interpret your dreams. Listen to what they tell you. Spend close, excuse me, pay close attention to how they make you feel. Heed what they reveal and learn who you are and who you wish to be. <clears throat> So that tells me right there that y'all have been having some funky dreams. And that fun those funky dreams may have a lot to do with you wanting to stay in a situation where you're by yourself, more independent, just alone. Now, some of you guys are just alone, period. And you guys are wanting to things to change anyway. And you're looking for, you just can't figure out how you want to go about this change. I think some of you guys may want to be alone, but then you also don't. And that kind of being pulled between two sides of, you know, of the street kind of is why you have the two swords there in the first place. Like some of you guys want to be alone, but then some of you guys don't. Okay? And it's hard for you guys to want a relationship, but also not really want to take on a relationship, if you get what I'm saying. So, if we look at this diagonally already from Heed Your Dreams, we have the two pentacles in your past, which, would, like I said, would indicate distractions. But it also talks about balancing situations and trying to make a, a really valuable decision. A situ decision that would reflect in not only commitments, but also taking up the work necessary to make this decision a reality. And that reality has a lot to do with what your dream is. And I think the thing is, is that considering that Heed Your Dreams is here and the Two of Coins is all about pushing those dreams back or pushing beyond your emotions, your focus has been only on what can I get in this physical present instead of using my power to of dreams to manifest exactly what I want. Because I feel like one of these pentacles here is your dream, is your heart's desire. But because yes, it's not maybe in front of you, or perhaps this is about what you can do physically in that moment at this at the time. You know, you you know the the dream aspect has been put aside. Therefore, the person of your that you want, the person that is your person, the King of Swords, is on the outskirts of the decision making. Um. Now, considering that some of you guys may have been trying to figure out what needed to be done or trying to keep the balance of a situation because you liked being in your dreams with the person that you're with or you have a dream bay, but this dream bay is purely um, your, um, in your mind. It's really interesting. It's not like the King of Cups. And I kind of get this, this, I kind of get this feeling that this King of Swords kind of protects you in a way. This person that stands, that's like a stand-in for the person that you want is really legitimately an imaginary friend because or an imaginary partner because this person is your way of putting your keeping your defenses up and pre keeping somebody outside of you it's, a, it's it's different from the king of cups when it comes to manifesting your partner because i think there's just someone that's a stand in here okay because the king of swords is a truth is a belief system or he is the representation of his own beliefs and his and logical thinking and the fact that this is external is that it's mostly because I feel like this is someone, I think this is either someone that's outside of you that's trying to communicate with you and you don't notice them because you're not, you know, because the person that you want is someone that you may not believe you can, you can have because your emotions are different than what is physically presented to you. Or, you know, this is someone that you have in your mind at this moment that's p feeling like a really weird construct of protection and safety and it's keeping you from wanting anything outside of yourself because it's too much of a work, it's just too much work, or <clears throat> it's just, you know, you, could, you found balance this way. You found about balance in your life by having somebody in your mind to take that time up or take the space for a relationship, but it doesn't replace the physicality of it. Like the idea of a man or idea of a woman or idea of a person or a partner or a friend is wonderful, but can it physically happen? Well, we have this in the very center as a dream. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but it, it's, it starts by one believing that you can have a dream, you know, you can have that dream come true. The magician is your underlying energy for a reason. It starts by recognizing that you have the tools to manifest what you want, but it also means that you have to believe in yourself that you can have these dreams come true. 
and uh, have them manifested in your present moment. And the reason why you have the mission here is because the Two of Swords is back. Interesting. Two of Swords. Why do you have the Two of Swords in the first place? See why. The Fool. Taking a leap of faith. And that leap of faith, that brain, that, that leap of freedom to put yourself out there, you've done it once. And now it's like you don't know if you're wanting, you're ready to do it again. You don't know if you're ready to do it again. You don't know if you're want, willing to do it again. And that is because, true too, it's trusting yourself that's the biggest thing. Now, another thing I've noticed is that the King of Swords would be Aquarius, right? It's you. It can be. It doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be tied to you. Please read the reading based off of what resonates, right? But I kind of get this feeling that, you know, you, you have a dream. You do want to make those a reality. But the problem is that yourself, meaning... Now that you are in your own way, which it kind of is saying that, and the reason why is because you do not trust yourself. You do not trust yourself. You do not trust anyone outside of you. And therefore, it's very hard to have any sort of dreams. Um, and probably even you try to stop your dreams or you start to control what you feel, experience, because you don't trust that anything can come. You, you feel like the real you is not you right here. Because it's interesting to have the King of Swords, your card, as an external energy from where you are right now. And the Hermit is really a card of reflection and going back within, but you are Saudi of yourself. It's very weird. To see the King of Swords here with the Hermit is very weird. It's like you are looking within yourself and looking at yourself from an external view. You know, it's almost like you're criticizing yourself. And it's really odd because the the hermit is not a criticizing energy. He looks to heal himself. He looks to repair things. But where you guys are going, you know, you guys are like isolating yourselves and making your and ostracizing yourself at the same time. It seems like some of you guys, some of you guys may not even agree with this or not even you know you know make sense you know not make sense of it. But like more of like you guys just don't. It's not happening. But some of you guys, you know, with this reflection, which is nothing wrong with reflecting and looking back and figuring out who you are, figuring out your, tr you know, through the truths that you've experienced, it does tell me that you've been through a lot. But you're also, it looks like you're hiding out from yourself. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, the Knight of Pentacles is... <sighs> Okay, so like I said, the Hermit, it talks about the reflection and looking within. It can talk about alienating yourself or putting yourself in a situation where you're more isolated than you were before. <laughs> but I feel like it's the reason why is because of the dreams that you may have. You're trying to understand yourself through the dreams that you're having about your ideal person, by, by, about the person that you want that, that, to, you know, to come in to offer, either to offer you something or you want to offer them something. I kind of get this feeling that you're, you know, like I said, you're okay with being solo, but the problem also is being solo and, and, you know, and the reason why you haven't decided to make, a, you know, to go out there and find a real person or whatever is because they don't measure up to what your dream bay looks like and what your ideal person is. I don't think you're focused on focusing on anything impractical because the Knight of Pentacles would never focus on anything impractical. But I think the dream of somebody that you have, you know, committed to, maybe the Knight of Pentacles could be a, you know, a Virgo, Capricorn, or a Taurus that's come in that's younger. Or it could indicate that this is about, you know, you're looking very closely at the details of all of these, you know, dreams. And you're studying those dreams. You're trying to understand these dreams. Just like how the heed your dream card was even suggesting. You're trying to understand why you're having these dreams in the first place. Or maybe why you have these desires. Or why these desires and wants are even so are so astronomically huge for you. <laughs> you know, what do they mean to you? What is those what is what is the value of those dreams? I think you're trying to figure out what is worthy of your time and effort. You know, you're trying to come up with your own truth here of trying to find a new purpose and it's hard because maybe what you guys wanted couldn't either couldn't be had or you just it just didn't wouldn't work out therefore it's hard to find who you are because that situation had collapsed within itself 
not having anything to do with you. I don't think it's your fault. It's just that sort of situation regarding that person is the reason why you have a hard time finding purpose for yourself. If that's the case for some of you guys, or this purely you're having a problem finding purpose for yourself, period. Cause you don't know in which direction you want to go into. Now your future is suggesting the two of wands be in your, you know, obviously in your future, right? So that can indicate, like, like I was saying before, making a decision about where you want to go, who, you, you know, what you want to do, you know, how do you want to pursue your goal? And I feel like right now you're kind of just stuck in what do you want to do or what can you do? What do you have patience for right now? Right? What do you, when, you know, because you know you're the knower of all things. The king of swords is someone that knows everything. Their intellect, intellect is superior. And it seems like it's harder and harder to find what you want because you've already done half the stuff that you've been done, you know, that you've, it, that's being presented to you. And it kind of just feels like you guys are just kind of having a hard time figuring out what you want to do. You're still stuck at a crossroads. And how do you want to pursue it? I think, it, you know, it's a good step anyway to, you know, from the the Hermit Seven of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles to finally go on the, the quest of figuring out how do you want to execute what you want to execute versus trying to figure out what it is that you want to do. Because at least you have something that you're trying to go for. But at least, but then you get stuck at, you know, what what do you want to do and how do you want to do it but what is it <laughs> that's the biggest thing before we get to this you got to figure out what is it now your best path to follow is the eight of cups okay and the eight of cups talks about moving on like like not moving on but going finally you know not finally but listening to what your heart wants um, the Eight of Cups does is very similar to the Seven of Cups. And I don't think you're going to find anything through the options that you have right now, even though they're realistic options. I don't think that's an, those are, any of these options are appealing to you whatsoever. They're some doable, you know, Nine of Pentacles are doable. And I feel like these dreams and, you know, stuff, they're kind of good at keeping you where you are and procrastinating from making a real decision, which would be none of these decisions, but truly just going on faith and going on what you truly want to pursue, you know, or finding out within yourself or finding out outside of these options what it is that you want, what it is that will make you happy, finding your ninth cup, finding your cup, your specifically designed cup. Instead of finding a cup that's predetermined or pre-existing. Okay. Because you get emotionally drained here. This is talking about emotionally being emotionally drained. No longer being able to give of yourself to a situation. We're no longer giving the time and energy to situations that no longer serve. Or has never really served in the first place. The options don't present anything to you that is of interest to you. So you have to find your own way. You have to find your own passions. You have to find your own desires. And it starts by figuring out what it is that you want to feel. Because right now, you're the king of swords detaching from your circumstances. And you have been like that since the very beginning. The two of cups. Distracting yourself with work and responsibilities and not looking at how you feel. And it's because it was, it's because it was a defense mechanism from when you were hurt. And it's understandable, considering that whatever you've been through was very painful. The only way you become the king of swords is by experience. And that experience can be can be wonderful, joyous, and beautiful. But it also can be severely painful. And I think that's why it was not, you know, in your, in your interest to figure out what you felt. Because at that time, what you were feeling was what you wanted was the person of your dreams. Which is this person that's outside of you. The person that's not in front of you. You know who you want. You know what you want. But it's like, at the same time, it just seems like it's out of your power. And it doesn't mean that you can't have it. It just means that this person may come in a different form. Or this person may be right there around you. But your focus is so much on the realistic or the real. Because you've dealt with something that wasn't. Or you feel like you've dealt with something that wasn't. And it's hard for you to figure out whether or not it was legitimate or not. Because there was no real evidence of legitimacy at all. Nor was there any evidence of there not being, um, you know, legitimacy. It's so interesting how all this is t intertwining together. But the biggest thing that you guys fear 
is letting it go. And letting it go would mean that you put yourself in a very vulnerable st state, that you allow the outside of world around you to conduct the changes that you would prefer to do on your own. But I don't think that this is calling for you to necessarily make changes in your life that are super huge. I feel like big, mostly just saying just accept, you know, just be open to changes that come into your life. Because they can be gifts. Yes, it may be big gifts and hard gifts to, you know, adapt to because they're one, again, big changes in your life. But there's a lot of emphasis on what you can and cannot control and what you're willing to, you know, happen and not willing to happen because you don't trust yourself to handle it. You don't trust yourself to have a, a wonderful experience or have a experience that's different than the one that you're experiencing, even if it's not necessarily very exciting. Even if it's not making, it's not taking you anywhere. It's not you're not growing in any way. Because the fountain card is all about being. It's all about, you know, just literally not doing a thing, just being yourself, being who you are. And I think the fear of you know of letting yourself just be, letting yourself just enjoy. You're maybe this dream person, and I know I keep saying dream person with the King of Swords. He may not be, you know, he's not the King of Cups. He can't be a dream person, but your ideal partner is definitely showing up in the external energy if this is not you. And I feel like it's just if you just be instead of looking to try to control every area, things things can happen. But it's under so understandable that you know that that shit can happen, and you don't want that to happen. So you are, so you feel like you're ready. So you feel like you can trust yourself. Until so you gain a better relationship with yourself, you don't want any changes to happen. You don't want nothing to happen yet. So your outcome is the tower. It's very odd, but the tower is coming up in your outcome, which would suggest something happens out of the blue that would push you towards making a decision about how you want to handle it, how do you want to tackle it, versus what needs to be done, or what do you want to do, period. So you go from, what do I want to do, what do I want to pursue, to what do I have to do, like, what, which direction, how do I want to, you know, what choice am I going to make about how I'm going to adapt with this with these adjustments and usually the tower is two things either you make the changes happen or the changes happen because you haven't been moving and it's because you've been refusing to move it's because you either you've been refusing to adjust or to make the changes in your life that would encourage continual process and growth standing still on purpose can be good for a certain amount of time, a certain amount of things and purposes, but if you're doing it because you don't want to, mm -hmm, because you don't want to embrace something new coming in, it's not necessarily the healthiest option. And you guys have surrendered to divine timing. See, that's the card that's like li literally all this reading is telling me is that you guys are refusing to move forward with something, and it's because you're just not ready for it. You feel like you don't, you're not ready for it. You don't want it yet. There's some things that you're still trying to understand about yourself. You know, but God, you know, God speed with that because as soon as you figure it out, things are going to definitely shift a lot more, a lot more than you realize. Sometimes divine timing may differ from someone, um, sometimes divine timing may differ from your ego's timing. If a goal isn't manifest fast enough or slow enough in this case, according to your ego, be patient and trust the universal flow or as a matter of fact, brace yourself for the universal flow. Because it looks like you're not necessarily trying to make shit happen. This is not what you guys are doing. You're not forcing anything. You're not making something happen at all. As a matter of fact, you're pulling all the reins. You're like, it's like you have an army of horses just you're just guiding on your own. And you're trying to pull on all the reins to keep them from going over that one bridge that was going to pretty much select that one horse. That the one horse that you're either standing on and the one that you really want to go down. And you're not quite ready to cross that bridge yet. The surrender to divine timing is telling you that you guys are trying to force a situation. It's more of like it's time to embrace the changes that are coming. And that's why you guys have your guard up. That's why, that's why you guys are distant. That's why you guys are not embracing the stuff that's coming in. You're rejecting it because you, this is a change that you did not orchestrate. This is a change. And I don't want to sound like make you sound like you guys are narcissists or anything like that because you're not. It's understandable, right? Nobody wants a change that they didn't make themselves or they didn't deem themselves ready for. It's 100% a normal human response and totally understandable. However, 
it doesn't mean, <laughs> it doesn't mean that we aren't ready because we don't feel like it. You know, not saying that we don't, like, saying like, we don't, you know, we don't feel like taking on the challenge. Not that, no, I mean, like, it doesn't mean you're not ready because you don't feel like you're ready. You know, and it doesn't mean that you can't overcome the struggles of the past, you know, while you embrace something new or realize even, maybe the missing piece to what you're looking for is in the changes that are coming in, but you're trying to figure it out now before you have something else come in. And you can always do that on your own, but I feel like the missing key is change. 